I'm joined now by Mr. Denver Riggleman. He's a former U.S. congressman from Virginia who served as a Republican in the, the U.S. House of Representatives. Congressman, it's good to have you on the program. You're not very far from Washington, D.C. Um, give us the temperature of the country tonight after President Biden's inauguration and after his first full day in the Oval Office. Sure. And, and again, thanks for having me. Uh, this is great. My first time on German television. I'm excited. Um, no, it's, um, you know, my background wasn't just politics. You know, I had 20 years of counterterrorism experience and, you know, been fighting disinformation. You know, one of the only Republicans to come out against QAnon so early, which was almost a year ago now. And I think the temperature is still not where it needs to be. It's still a little bit hot. You know, if you're looking at polling right now, almost 80 percent of Republicans believe that this election was stolen. And I think that's a shame. And, you know, looking at conspiracy theories and looking at the disinformation that we've had to go through, this social contagion or this digital virus, whatever you want to call it, has not gone away. It's just sort of migrating to other social network channels. So when you're looking at the temperature here, there's a feeling of sort of unsettled calm. But when you're looking at some of the Republican constituency and, and some of these districts, uh, not quite as calm as we would hope it would be. Well, what would you like to see the let's start with the Republican Party. Um, what would you like to see the, the GOP do now that Donald Trump is no longer president. Well, you know, they, there was mixed messages. You know, it wasn't that long ago, a few days ago, the uh, Republican leader, uh, minority leader Kevin McCarthy, who I know, said that President Trump held some responsibility for the riots. And then today or yesterday, he backtracked on that. And what you have is this mixed message. And here's what the message just needs to be. QAnon is fantasy. The conspiracy theories around Stop the Steal and the Capitol siege, fantasy. None of it true. There's not systemic fraud. It has to be very specific because we can only fight this type of disinformation with facts. And you have this sort of propaganda push that's still going on by certain individuals, even the Republican in Congress right now. And I think that's the thing that's bothering a lot of people that look at this not from a political sense, but from an analytical or intelligence sense or military operations sense with the background that I have. And, and I just don't see this 100 percent push uh, to push this radical theory back when it comes to stop the steal. And, and I think if we don't do that, we're going to have this problem for years. Well, well what would a pushback look like? Um, would it look, I mean, would, do you include a, a trial and conviction of Donald Trump being one? And what about members of Congress who have pushed these conspiracy theories? I'm thinking of Josh Hawley, Ted Cruz. I mean, should they be expelled from Congress and expelled from the, the GOP? That's a, that's a hard question to ask. You know, for me, I think censuring or looking at things that are that ridiculous, I think there needs to be some kind of accountability for that kind of behavior, uh, especially, you know, with Josh Hawley, you know, giving that sort of salute to the crowd, um, just, you know, just just complete political pandering in such a dangerous fashion. Uh, and looking at the president, I think I'm one of those Republicans. I think they should go forward with impeachment um, based on what I've heard, based on what I've seen. A lot of people talk about just that speech on January 6th. But you're talking about months of pushing disinformation. And I want to remind people, it was President Trump that retweeted that President Biden killed SEAL Team 6. He retweeted that, or that Osama bin Laden had a body double. And again, looking at it from an intelligence or analytics perspective, looking at it from disinformation and taking politics right after it, the data speaks for itself. It just speaks for itself. And again, I never thought somebody would die like Ashley Babbitt, um, mm -hmm. believing the same thing that a guy wearing horns believes. Um, and that's, again, I just think th this is so surreal to have the biggest conspiratorial grift in history mm -hmm. and for that to lead to a siege on the Capitol, there mm -hmm. needs to be accountability. Does the Republican Party, I mean, it, it, it is divided. I mean, you have all of these, uh, these fractions and factions in the, in the party now. Does it even deserve um, a, a chance to, to continue on or... Would it be best if, if it, you know, ceased to exist and there was a founding of something different? Well, you know, the 30 percent, 25 to 30 percent that, um, you know, didn't sign on to that ridiculous lawsuit from the, I don't know if you're aware of that, the Texas AG lawsuit mm -hmm. to overturn the election. Or, you know, those individuals who, who didn't vote, you know, to turn away the electors. And I'll tell you, there was only 10 to vote for impeachment. Uh, we're at a real crossroads here. And, and I'm going to shock some people here. A lot of the people that voted for that don't believe in it. They didn't believe that there was a stop the steal movement. They don't believe in any of that. It's just the fundraising has been so good at the grassroots level. And that's the issue with the GOP right now is that mm -hmm. they would rather pander to crazy than say facts. And the reason that's the case is they want to get reelected. Mm 
Mm-hmm. And that's a, that's the issue with the two party system we have. That's the issue with careerists. Uh, that's why I'm where I'm today. You know, I, I did things and said things I thought were fact. I was willing to lose because I didn't need the paycheck and and I do other things. You know, I uh, I still mm-hmm. do counterterrorism work and I own a whiskey distillery. So I I have a life outside of Congress. Tr- trust yeah. me. But a lot of these people do not. And and the fact is, it's dangerous to pander to these type of individuals and to weaponize insanity like we saw on January 6th. Former Congressman Denver Riggleman joining us tonight from the great Commonwealth of Virginia. Congressman, we appreciate your time and your insights tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you, sir.